Praise the Lord. Thank God it's Friday. Happy and a revolution day ba? Tama. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God it's Friday. So we thank the Lord for blessing our nation and we and I we speak blessing over the Philippines. We speak blessing and favor and the gospel of grace to be preached in among um, among our countrymen and we speak prosperity we speak divine um protection over this land and thailand um and over its people lord we pray that you would sweep this nation with the gospel of grace and um and we say lord that we are um uh one with you um uh lord um we want to participate in the in this great revolution in the grace revolution in this country and we speak prosperity over this nation over the and over our families over us who are here and even filipinos um scattered all over all over the world thank you jesus thank you lord that you so love this country and we just lord expect big things and um, as we open our eyes and as as we speak good words lord we by faith, we know that it's going to be manifesting. In Jesus' name, Amen. Bakit ako biglang napa, ano, <laughs> napapray sa Pilipinas? Anyway, it's good. So, desiring double. Yan. So, what uh, what comes to your mind is, um, sabi nga ni Edda kanina, no, is um, the famous ano of Elisha. The famous prayer of Elisha, but um, um, uh, I will discuss that in the in the ano na, towards the end. Na. So desiring double, ganyan. So, uh, pag sinabing double, right? When you um, uso pa ba ang ano? Uso pa ba ang pag ano pag pag fill up ng uh, bio data? <laughs> diba? uh, actually, uso pa naman ba? Single, married, de ba? Widow and then others. Actually, yung Mary doon is double, right? So actually, this Bible study is desiring marriage, desiring married, to be married, ganyan. Di ba? Oh, tapos na. Anyway, so, um, our Lord Jesus Christ is the anointed one. Kasi the, when you read the book, um, Pastor Prince discussed all about um, uh, the anointing of um, double portion. But when you look into, when you study, actually, yung origin ng mga words, like yung ang um, anointed, yung anointing, is there's only one anointed, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. And since you are in Christ, you are you are in the anointed one, and therefore, wherever, wherever you go, you are anointed, di ba? The long and short of it. Anyway, so let's discuss. Our high priest, the anointed one, is our um, uh, Lord Jesus Christ. He said in Luke. It, uh, look, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. And the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is also on you. Because He has anointed me. So this is the purpose, right? So the Spirit of the Lord is on you and on me because He has anointed you and me to proclaim the good news. The good news to the poor. To the poor like you and me. <laughs> and now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. We are we are the ambassadors of good news, anointed to proclaim the good news. Hallelujah, first and foremost, to ourselves, to our family, and to this great nation. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So I just want to um to concentrate on these two phrases, but Doon sa verse 20, sabi niya, then he scrolled up the, and then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, so tingnan niyo, no, nothing is there, um, you know, just to fill up the pages in the Bible. But the Lord saw that everyone was really, you know, focusing on him. Then he began to say, then he began by saying to them, today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. There are cert there are words that were released to you and I for the past two years, right? And sabi ko kanino parang hindi ko maalala. So it's worth really remembering. So it's worth really having fellowship with one another so that we remind one another with the 
word of the Lord that was spoken to you. Hallelujah. So let's let's ano, let's focus on the anointed me to proclaim the good news. You know that the anointed, yung word anointed is mas, ma, mashak or di ba Yeshua HaMashiach. It's the anointed one. It's a very famous verse used um, uh, actually by, sadly, by leaders in the church to um, terrorize um, their people. Do not touch the anointed. Ganyan. Kasi before we didn't know. We thought that he's the only one anointed. But now we know because we are in Christ. He also anointed, ah. <laughs> diba? Because that's in Romans 8.11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And in the uh, Mirror Bible translation, it's so, so um, beautiful. And, you know, the explanation is mind-blowing. Our union with Christ further reveals that because the same spirit that awakened the body of Jesus from the dead inhabits us. Hallelujah dun pala, no? The same spirit that awakened the body of Jesus from the dead inhabits you and I. We equally participate in his resurrection. You know, when we partake of the bread, when we eat of the bread, and when we partake of the, uh, partake of the wine, it's not a simple remembering like like we remember we are being reminded no we are actually participating in the actual act we are participating in his death in his resurrection hallelujah so that, that that's why the lord is saying come come hallelujah because it's a shared life it's a life of union so in the same act of authority whereby God raised Jesus from the dead, He co-restores your body to life by His, His indwelling Spirit. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly. So kanina, I, as I was meditating on this, no, you know, uh, parang tayo, no, we, are a, uh, we are a river. Parang uh, yung body natin is a dam. Kumaga, but, but out of our rivers, kailangan niyang lumabas. Right? Kailangan mag-breakthrough from the dam, which is the encumbrance, which is our body. Right? Rivers of living water. That is you and I. Hallelujah. And what is, what is it? To proclaim the good news. And the good news. A, that, you, that you're, you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. A, that by His stripes, you are healed. You are whole. That is the good news. Praise the Lord. Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the crux of the gospel. Right? This is, this is, this is now the, the whole intention, right, of the cross and the resurrection. Because the Lord Jesus really wants to be in union with you and I. Christ in you, the hope of glory. A Christian is one who has the anointed one of God living in them. Again, a Christian, you and I, is one who has the anointed one of God living in them. Let it sink in. Let it really bring a uh, spring to your steps. Let, let it make you dance. Diba? Parang, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In John 14, 20, I like this very much when Ella um, shared this. It says in the, in the mirror, in that day you will know that we are in seamless, seamless, no ending, no end, like a ring, right? With one another. I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. I made a small um, uh, cartoon. The Father is this, right? And then the Son is in the Father, and the Holy Spirit is given, and we are in the Holy Spirit, correct? So the outer circle is the Father, then Jesus in the Father, then us in Jesus, and the Holy Spirit in us. Ah, yun yung ano mas accurate. Ulit. The outer circle is the Father, then Jesus in the Father, then us in Jesus, and the Holy Spirit in us. Hallelujah. So this spells inseparable, intimate oneness. Note that it is not our knowing that positions Christ in the Father, or us in them, or the Spirit of Christ in us. Our knowing, because this is, this is the truth. It will not change 
um even if you know it or or even if you don't know it or know it but it matters right our knowing simply awakens us to the reality of our redeemed oneness our our in himness gusto kong uli magpagawa ng t-shirt na yun in him <laughs> in himness gold does not become gold when it is discovered but it certainly becomes currency Hallelujah. And in Isaiah 41.10, I, I would like to repeat it. Um, I am with you, Emeka Ani. I am with you, Emeka Ani. This is the this is the letters. Ayin, Mem, Kaf, Aleph, Mem, Yod. Ano man yung ano, hindi ko na-paste na dito, nalimutan ko na. Nung um, last Wednesday, my our husbands competed in the darts competition dito sa Cavite. And then si Alex, may kalaban siya. Ganyan. Tapos napansin ko yung kamay niya. Alam niyo, lo and behold, what is in his hand? God is with me. Sabi ko, Lex, kaya pala natalo kasi may tattoo siya na God is with me. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, sabi ko na sa Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, uh, thou, uh, uh, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you. With the right hand of my righteousness. So, anong ibig sabihin niyan? Yan, imeka ani. See, speak, and receive his sacrifices, mighty action. There's another verse, actually, which is, uh, mali ang aking animation, but anyway, which is um, yung John 14, 20, actually. And you are in me. Yung in, in, in the Hebrew pala is anathon B. You know, I remember we have a Bible study about um, about Jeremiah, yung um, um, the the son of Anathoth. Remember, Ella? I, uh, but balikan niyo yun. You know that it's a place of blessing. It's a place of restoration. Ganyan. <laughs> Naalala ko lang ngayon, ha? So, bearing and you are in me, Anathon B. Sabi nga na, yet in a little while, the world the world sit no more, but you see me, because I live, you shall live also. And that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Yung you are in me, Aleph, Nun, Tav, Yod, Nun, Bet, Yod. So when you when when I study this, ah, it's so beautiful, the power of His life because of the cross made your life His dwelling place, a house of prayer. You and I are called to preach the gospel, to heal the nation, to heal the sick. Hallelujah! To raise the dead. A house of prayer. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng house of prayer? It's to, it's to um, um, bring down heaven on earth. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So exciting, no? <laughs> so, um, um, which, which I would just like to remind you and share with you again yung, um, I, I just realized, no, yung kanta na, down at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high place. In your presence, Lord, I seek your face. I seek your face. There is no higher calling, no greater honor than to bow and kneel before your throne. I'm amazed at your glory, embraced by your mercy, O oh Lord. I live to worship you. You know yung yod don, di ba yod? House of prayer. Yod means arm or hand, and it its form suggests a hand that is reaching towards heaven. Me, me, reaching towards heaven to bring it down, right? The letter somehow resembles a man in prayer. So that's you and I. We are um, a picture of um, which comes to mind is Mary at the feet of our Lord Jesus. Being in union with him, having this great awareness, huge awareness that he's with us. So in, in, the, in business um, lingo, uh, it's very common, right? When you are having this, uh, especially in one-on-one -on -one with your boss, right? Uh, you know, you have to have a very, you have to have a good self-awareness. But you know, the, the gospel is the opposite. It's not teaching you to have um, self-awareness because what to see when you're self-awareness, you will see how your badness and you will see all your transgressions and you will see all your shortcomings. But what the Lord is saying, have this constant awareness of who? Of our Lord Jesus and that He is with us. 
Hallelujah. Yung pala yun. So, the God, the uh, anointed, anointed you and I to proclaim the good news. The announcement, the announcement, what is that announcement? The gospel that brings heaven to earth. The only gospel that allows Christian to grow up into generous, loving, confident, fearless children is a gospel that holds up before them a generous, loving, confident, fearless father. The gospel is the proclamation of our Lord Jesus Christ and showing how good the Father is when we see when we see it in our Lord Jesus Christ. It declares, the, the Lord Jesus Christ declares, hey, you have a Father who loves you very much. Hallelujah. And He's so generous. And He's not the one delaying. Can you imagine if my children ask me for something, especially food, right, or um, clothing, and then they think of me as I'm a delaying or very stingy. Um, sadly, because of years of um, preaching about uh, misrepresentation of our Heavenly Father being mis misrepresented, we have a, the opposite picture. We picture, um, we picture him as some, someone who, you know, somehow you, you need to be uh, doing, doing um, acrobatics and then he's delaying things. Di ba meron pa ano? There's, there's only three answers to your prayers. Yes, no, and wait. Ganyan. But you know what? In, in with, with, with our Father, it's already given my Son. All things that I have is yours. We just have to be awakened to the truth of His Word. Right? We have to be awakened and believe who, believe Him that who He says He is. Right? A father is not afraid of the mess of our lives because he's the one who left his dwelling and ran towards us and stretched out his arms on the cross and buried us and our mess in himself 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the gospel is not the news of what might be if you. It is the news of what is because he, Christ. The gospel is not the news of what might be if you, it is the news of what is, because he, Christ. The gospel is not the proclamation of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that people may partake of that knowledge and then do something about the evil in their lives. It not, it's not about behavior modification, but it's heart transformation. The gospel is a proclamation of a dream fulfilled. You are his dream fulfilled. You and I are his dream fulfilled. A tree of life that God has none, what you could never do, no matter how much you know about good and evil. So when the Lord came to Abraham, he named him father of many nations, and yet Abraham remained childless. And as long as Abraham saw his state in the world as more real to him, parang tayo lang na no, than God's name for him, then he always felt like father of many nations was something God was asking him to become. Like, like he, he has to do some things to, to become like father of many nations rather than to simply be. So the Lord tonight is asking you to simply be. To simply be in Christ. To simply be married to Him. Hallelujah! So he tried to become the father of many nations. And the only way he knew how, how was to sleep with his slave girl, Hagar. And they had a son, Ishmael. This was the season when Abraham's vision fell down to earth with a bomb. So that's why the Lord has been telling us, awake, open your eyes and see to the reality of who you are in Christ. So with earthly eyes, he saw Hagar and said to himself, I am not a father of many nations. I'm not even a father. But if I sleep with Hagar, then I will become a father in nine months time. And all of heaven was saying, lift up your eyes, Abraham. Do not say nine more months than the harvest. Hagar, my, my, uh, ha the Lord is saying to you and I, Hagar is not your hope. Your performance is not your hope. God with you. God with you. God with you is your hope. You know, and I would just like to share this with you. This is so precious. And this will blow your socks off. And this has really blessed me. Despite the um, despite the um, the history of Abraham with Hagar, you know that Abraham, after um, um, uh, his loving beloved wife uh, Sarah died, 
right? He remarried. Ketura ang pangalan nun. Genesis 25 verse 1. Then again, Abraham took a wife and her name was Ketura. Who's Ketura? Why are we talking about her? There are many Jewish commentators who believe that, that the woman married was not a, what's not a third wife, but a second. Ketura was really Hagar. It was Isaac, well, according to uh, Rabbi Isaac, who played matchmaker and went to Hagar after his mother Sarah passed away and convinced Hagar to return and marry his father. What is interesting is that she bears a new name. Now, not one of light and fear, but Ketura, which means sweet-smelling perfume. You and I, because we are married to Christ, we are no more under the law. We have a new name, right? In Christ, we are Mrs. Grace. Hallelujah. Just like, just like Hagar, she was restored and she was not, she's now called Ketura. Just now Ketura, sweet smelling perfume. In its root form, which is Qatar, so yung Qatar, no, yung country pala na Qatar, no, it means smoke of a sacrifice. The smoke rising from a sacrifice is really a sign of acceptance of the sacrifice and the redemption that it brings. So what is it all about? You and I is this picture, right? That we, that a hey, Hagar, awaken to the, to, the, to the reality now that you are a Ketura, right? You are a Ketura. You are a sweet-smelling perfume to your husband. Hallelujah. And everything that Abraham has is yours. Hallelujah. She's no more Hagar. She's no more the, the one um, fleeing. Hallelujah. The one in flight and, 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 and fear. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, church, bride of Christ, the light now dawning on the church. God is waking up nations to the presence of God in, in you, his church, his body. You know we don't need to um we don't need to be fooled with um you know the stories about um uh, asking for donations that um you know uh in um contributions to uh the building of a temple in Jerusalem blah 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 you know if you want to treat if you want to um uh, uh contribute to the temple of the Lord treat yourself uh, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit take care of your body <laughs> hallelujah as the church awakes to the presence of God in their midst. Not only you, uh, but your uh, your sisters and brother in Christ. So as the church awakes to the presence of God in their midst, and that is happening right now, especially in this group, to the preaching of the mystery of the gospel hidden from generation, Christ in you the hope of glory. So we preach the fullness of the gospel, the union of Christ with his church, that the church would awake to the presence of God, the righteousness of God and see not that is no longer think and so live as if separated from God. And this is really the antidote to not, you know, um, uh, dwell in your flesh. To have this awareness that you are in union with your bridegroom, with your Abba. Hallelujah. So the greatest paradigm shift in the minds of believers what transforms our lives most is when our thinking is enlightened by the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, to begin to see that everything earthly-minded religion tells you that you need to, Christ already did on the cross. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants the church of this generation to inbreathe the revelation of their union with Christ in such a way that emboldens us with a peace and joy and a passion that we have not walked up walk in up up to now so it's just like this no so the church is awakening to her mar marriage with god and finding herself in peace one with him you know that the meaning of peace irene in greek right is in oneness with him church you are cut off from death church bride of christ you are cut off from death in luke 2 21 in christ you too were named the day you were cut off for when he spoke your new name, what is your name? In Christ, you were cut off from death unto life. Hallelujah. So throughout the old covenant, eternal callings were announced by angels. But since the appearance of Christ, immortality is now revealed through the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 2 Timothy 1, 9-10. So living from God's heavenly perspective on life 
living a uh the, the uh in other words the title desiring double right desiring double it is desiring being married desiring marriage so living from god's heavenly perspective on life being together with i'm not asking you to do one thing for me i'm i only ask you to do everything with me so the only life the father the son and the holy spirit know is a being together with life it is the double uh, uh it is the desiring double life being together with life so to be led by the holy spirit is simply to learn to live a being together with god life you are now double you're no more single rather than a life alone so in the king james version in john 16 33 as i've said that the lord said these things i've spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good, good cheer. I have overcome the world. Peace, Irene in Greek, is one, in one, quietness and rest. His peace is the gift of his presence in you. His peace is the gift of his uh, uh, in union with you. Hallelujah! Because under the old covenant mindset, you're always trying to reach God. You're always trying to... To, to please God, to reach God, the new covenant mindset, the mind of Christ is that God reach you. God reach out to you. So the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, in Genesis 2, 10, 12, now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four river beds. The name of the first is Pishon. It is one which skirts the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Bedilium, onyx stone are there. The river, the Holy Spirit who is now in you, as it flows to the land of our lives, is able to open up that land and bring out the gold there, the treasure in us that is the life of Christ. And a sweet fragrance comes from forth from our lives as the treasure is drawn out, the Spirit of God. So we have so much treasure in us as the river flows. We are going to be astonished at the treasure and the fragrance that comes forth from our lives. And therefore, you, you have already the double portion, you know, because you are in Christ. Hallelujah! So when God speaks to you, He doesn't speak to you according to your earthly record. So when we speak to one another, we don't speak to one another according to our earthly record, according to our behavior, according especially bad behavior, but according to His eternal grace and purpose given to you in Christ. He speaks to you in a way, the Holy Spirit, that doesn't leave you where you are, the victim of your circumstances, the product of your earthly record, but speaks to you in a way that calls you out of that life into one he has prepared He has prepared for you. There is the life prepared for you, the life in Christ. He speaks to you. He names you according to his purpose and grace given to you in Christ before you were even born. Hallelujah. Why? For the same reason, when you were an infant, that your parents never spoke to you as a dog, even though the way you behave was, was little different to a dog, they spoke to you as who they knew you to be, even when neither you nor your behavior agreed with that name. They spoke to you that way because they were calling you upwards into maturity. So too, when your Heavenly Father speaks to you, He calls you according to what He has given to you in Christ in order that you would live that life, the life given in Christ. Child of God, you have already the double portion. We only have to manifest it. Hallelujah, the life given in Christ. Rivers of living water shall flow from your belly. Hallelujah. So, mighty oaks from little acorns grow. Words inspired by the Holy Spirit are the most powerful seed in the world. They produce oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they He may be that He may be glorified. We have received the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, that we may speak such words. This generation lies before us in 2023 like an open field. Let's plant well. Let's speak life to one another. In the Strong's Concordance, Elisha. So just like Elisha, right? Elisha is a prophet, which means God is salvation. God saves. And we know, right, that just like Elisha, we are to help our one another, right? And pray, Lord, open, open his eyes, open, open my eyes, first and foremost, right? That that we may see, that we may see who? Jesus. That we may see who? 
Jesus. Because when we see Jesus, right, we will see now that the time, now is the time of favor. Right? Yung now, John, diba? he says in 2 Corinthians 6.2, In the time, Kairos, of my favor, Dectos, yung time dyan, Kairos, right? And then yung favor, Dectos, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I help you. In the day of salvation, I help you. Now, when is the time? Now. Not the best is yet to come. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Now the word now is emphasized twice. Now is the time of God's favor and now is the day of salvation. So in time, right, Kairos, the time is Kairos in the Greek, which means a seasonable time, one opportunity. But when we study this, right, it's what? It's see the cross. See the cross. See the cross of of see the cross to see God's favor. The word favor is dektos, which means acceptable. So to preach acceptable dektos year of the Lord as he closed the book. So to preach what? So to preach what? To preach the cross. Hallelujah. So Elisha, repeat again, you know, yung, yung, um, yung story dun sa Second Kings. The Lord is asking you again, what shall I do for you? What shall I do for you? Asa, right? What shall, what shall I accomplish for you? Si I remember si Ruel nagsabi to si Lord yung ating pag-asa, right? For you, for you, the shepherd who opens the door. What what do you want the shepherd to open the door? What do you want? Because you have the double portion now. You have to you have to gush it out. Hallelujah! Let, let the the shepherd open the door of your belly. Actually, Hallelujah <coughs> for it to manifest. So, bride of Christ. You're married to him who was raised from the dead in Romans 7, 1, 4. You don't try to be a Christian. Actually, you die to be a Christian, right? Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law, to the body of Christ, that you may be married to one another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit. How do you? How is it possible that you are going to bear fruit? Because you died. You died and your life now is hidden with Christ in God, the forever one who lives. Hallelujah, so that you should bear fruit. The Father still knows that his church, largely made up of elder brothers, needs, stop, needs to stop crying out to God to move. So we don't, we don't pray like, like, Lord, move. No, he has already moved 2,000 years ago, speaking to him as if he doesn't care. And see what he sees. The Father still knows, Uleta, knows that his church need to stop crying out to move and see what he sees. What does he see? His union with you and I. The Father would have every man and his church look at the cross at Calvary and see the Father with us and giving us everything he had to give. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. The Father saw himself with the Son, but for that union to bear fruit, the Son needed to see the Father with him to see their union. So this is, uh, we are talking about the Lord Jesus. So God wants you and I to bear the fruit of his life. But because as a man thinks, so is he, so he is. So there must come, there must come a revelation of our union with him. We, have, we should have this, uh, we, we must have this profound, right? And constant awareness that he is with us. We need to see that Christ has married us and understand the enormity of the truth. For only then we can speak from union. If we don't realize, really, that we are in union with him, we don't speak with authority of that union. So, so to speak from a revelation of our union with God is to speak as Jesus spoke. Only by living from, that, from the reality of union can we speak in a way that will bring others into that same revelation. The world will see their separation from God as never before. When the church sees our union with God as never before, so the Holy Spirit is calling the church in this hour to rise into her ascended life of union. He is speaking the eternal words of the Father, Church, Bride of Christ, my bride, my son, can you see? Can you see? Can you see? Everything I have, because you're married to me, is yours. And you are always with me. Hallelujah. Can you see? Can you see? So... We come again to this verse. I am God Almighty. This is my covenant with you. Live in constant awareness that I am always with you. In Genesis 17, 1. And that, my dear sisters and brother, is chapter 25. 
Praise the Lord.